Welcome to the NSUSpartans.com football coaches show for the week of September 13th. We're here with Norfolk State football coach Pete Adrian. How are you doing today, coach? Good, Matt. Good. And yourself? Doing very well. Good. I imagine the team's probably doing pretty well as well. After a 23-14 victory last Saturday over North Carolina A&T, had to be a nice way to, to start the MEAC season and your home opener. Well, it's always good to win, and like you said, you know, if you like to win your first conference game, and it makes for a lot of anticipation, things like that. And the kids are excited about playing, and, and uh, should lead into help us uh, to get a win this weekend. Now, we saw some good things offensively and defensively out of the team last week. It was a complete performance. Uh, looking first at the defense, you didn't allow any points. Both A&T touchdowns uh, were scored by the, the defense for the Aggies or special teams. So what was the key last week to your defense playing so well? Well, you know, the kids really executed the game plan well. Um, they got all the checks in, and, and they played very hard, just like they did at Rutgers. You know, when you play hard like that and uh, uh, execute things, good things happen. And we had a little luck here. We had a, they had a couple guys in the flat open. And, and you know they missed the passes like that. Of course, a lot of that's when you get pressure on the quarterback. He's back here, knowing he's got to get rid of the football in, in a hurry. But overall, I was very pleased uh, with the effort. I mean, you have to be anytime you pitch a shutout. Uh, you got to be happy with that. I have to imagine as a coaching staff too. It's nice to see different players step up every week. At Rutgers, we saw the linebackers uh, make a lot of tackles. Anthony Taylor and Corwin Hammond. This past Saturday, we saw the defensive linemen were particularly active. What did you see out of their performance? Well, Ray Jennings really had a great football game. Uh, they couldn't handle Ray at all, and uh, he really put some good pressure on him and did what he's supposed to do. And of course, uh, uh, Turner inside is 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 really a, a load for anybody to try to block. And Joey Christine played very well on the outside, got pressure on that. So it always helps up front when that defensive line's working. It makes the whole defense play better. You mentioned Ray Jennings in particular. He's a senior now. This is his fifth year in the program. Got off to a bit of a slow start last year. I know he had some nagging injuries, but he came on late last season, and he's carrying that into the, the start this year. What um, what do you attribute his fast start to this year? Well, last year, you're right, he was coming off a severe ankle injury. And it, you know, had the high, high ankle sprain, which was really tough, and it really carried through camp and five or six weeks into the season when he finally got uh, ready. Really, he was just in good shape and ready to go and, and you know, knock on wood, he's injury free. Now, looking at the offensive side of the ball, uh, got off to a very quick start, moved the ball right down the field. Chris Wally hit on, I believe, his first eight passes, and he started pretty fast at Rutgers, too. What's been the key for Chris getting off to such quick starts? Well, I, I think the big thing is we script our first 12, 15 plays, and, and you know, we spent a lot of practice time on that, and, and we figure that it should be there, and when they are there, like when we anticipate the defense should line up in this, that's what's happening. And basically, he's just executing the game plan, and it's like anything. Once you go through it a couple of times, if the defense is any good at all, they're going to start making adjustments, and you got to go to different things. You mentioned going to different things, and from that point on, D'Angelo Branch sort of took over the game, 38 carries for 170 yards. What did you see out of him on Saturday? Well, it's a classic D'Angelo Branch. You know, as the game goes on longer, the more carries he gets, it seems to be the stronger he gets. And, and uh, we obviously can't give him 38 carries a game. He couldn't survive. But, you know, we like seeing him have somewhere between 22 and 26 carries a ball game. And hopefully he'll get that every weekend. But uh, you know, I think he's the best back in, in the MEAC conference uh, uh, because not only can he uh, run and run extremely hard, he blocks very well, and of course he can catch the ball out of the backfield. So to me, he's the total back. And we saw a lot of drives in the second and third quarter where um, obviously you knew Branch was going to get the ball. Yet you were still able to produce. So obviously you were getting a lot of good blocking up front from your line. Well, yeah. I, I mean, I, we averaged I think it was something like 4.5 on first down. So, you know, that's an on-schedule play. If you average that on first down, then uh, you're going to have great ball control, which we did. And, uh, you know, you're, uh, that's what you strive for. Right? It's, a, it's a defensive nightmare if every time you're looking at second and five, second and four, you know, because the whole playbook's open at that time. Uh, particularly Kendall Noble, we should mention him, got MEAC Offensive Lineman of the Week. Uh, second straight week that, that uh, someone from the Spartans has gotten one of those weekly awards, so I'm sure it's nice to see them get a little bit of the, the glory. I know the big guys up front don't always get a lot of the attention that they, that yeah, they should get. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, when, when uh, you have a back rush for 170-some yards, the guys up front had to do a lot with it. And uh, Kendall had an outstanding game, graded very well, and uh, did a great job in pass pro. And I thought our pass protection overall, again, was really good, just as it was at Rutgers. So, you know, there's a lot of good positive signs. we just got to keep playing one game at a time. I know one thing you mentioned after the game that you wanted to try to work on this week was um, some of your special teams areas, trying to shore those up a little bit, gave up a, a kickoff return touchdown to A&T. What are some things that you're looking for from those units this week? Well, you know, first of all, our, our punt team, punt coverage was outstanding. That, that's as good as I've seen since we were here. We got all good snaps in the punt. Uh, our punt return was, was good. Uh, we were one block away from really springing something. Our kickoff return was the same thing. We were one block away 
from getting it. Our kickoff coverage was about 50-50, and really we just got to work staying in our lanes a little better and adjusting to the ball. We got some young kids down there that are they're flying hard to the football, but when the ball's going right, you got to start going right, and they're still running down the field and it creates lanes. Right. And what are some of the other areas that you're going to focus on this week heading into the Virginia State game? Well, th this week here with Virginia State, uh, we know that they're going to play hard, and they're, you know this is their Super Bowl, so to speak. It's going to be the biggest crowd they play in front of all year long. So it's just a question of us taking care of what we have to do. You know, I mean, we got to execute our defensive game plan and play hard and have to tackle well. Uh, you know, this is probably the best uh, Virginia state offense uh, that they've had in three or four years. It's a veteran group like that, and they've got some speed. Uh, defensively, they're very sound, and, and they also play hard on defense. So they're coming up here with the idea that they can upset us. And of course, we're going to do all we can to make sure that doesn't happen. And you know, we have to do what we have to do. You know, if we go out and execute, we're going to win. Now, traditionally, this game has been played on Labor Day weekend. Now it's three weeks into the season. Uh, in between two MEAC contests for your team. Are you at all worried about your players having a bit of a letdown this week in between MEAC games? Well, we shouldn't, uh, you know, for the simple fact, one thing we've always preached since we've been here, we take, you know, one week at a time. We never talk about an opponent in front of us, so we, everything's been focused on Virginia State. Uh, I think the fact that JMU upset Virginia Tech, we've already used that scenario, that it can happen and it does happen. So, uh, you know, we, we don't look past anybody, and we certainly couldn't use that as an excuse. Sure. Well, we wish you good luck this Saturday, Coach. We expect a nice crowd at Dick Price Stadium, 6 p.m. this Saturday, as Norfolk State takes on a longtime interstate rival, Virginia State. We hope to see you there. The NSUSpartans.com Coach's Show. We'll see you next week.